The following operator training video on the Hobart 60 quart legacy mixer is a supplement to the instruction manual that came with your mixer. If you have any questions concerning operation, please consult your manual. The Hobart 60 quart legacy mixer is a heavy duty mixer constructed and designed to give long satisfactory service, providing it's properly used and maintained. The 60 quart legacy series is available in three models. The HL600 is equipped with stir plus four mixing speeds. The HL661 is equipped with one mixing speed. And the HL662 is equipped with two mixing speeds. Additionally, a 40 quart bowl and agitators are also available. A variety of agitators and accessories are available. These are described in a separate use and applications handbook which is furnished with your mixer. This training video includes this introduction and segments on operation, cleaning, and troubleshooting. Warning, moving agitator in bowl. Keep hands, clothing, and utensils out while in operation. Do not use without interlock guard. Let's take a minute to familiarize ourselves with the legacy's various parts. Legacy Mixer is equipped with smart timer controls and a power bowl lift. The wire cage must be in position or the mixer won't operate. The bowl must stay in the lock position on the bowl support or the mixer won't operate. If the bowl support isn't all the way up in the mixed position, the mixer won't start unless the start button is pressed and held. If the bowl support is not at the mixed position and the start button is pressed and held, the mixer will operate only in stir speed. The legacy's controls are located here. This is the start button, and this is the stop button. This dial sets the speed, and this dial sets the time. The speed selected is displayed here, and the time is displayed here. Using this switch engages the power bowl lift to either raise or lower the bowl. The model shown here has four mixed speeds as well as a stir setting. Stir speed is for incorporating ingredients at the start of each mixing process. Speed one, low, is for heavy mixtures such as pizza dough, heavy batters, and potatoes. Speed two, medium low, is for mixing cake batters, smashing potatoes, and developing bread dough. Speed three, medium high, is for incorporating air into light batches, as well as finishing whipped items. And speed four, high, is for maximum and accelerated air incorporations into light batches. These are model HL661 mixer speeds. Speed one, this speed is for heavy mixtures such as pizza dough. Meat grind, this speed is for grinding meat. Cheese shred, this speed is for shredding cheese. And vegetable slice, this speed is for slicing vegetables. These are the model HL662 mixer speeds. Speed one, slow, this speed is for heavy mixtures such as pizza dough. Speed two, low, this speed is for developing pizza dough. Meat grind, this speed is for grinding meat. Cheese shred, this speed is for shredding cheese. 
and vegetable slice. This feed is for slicing vegetables. The bowl must be installed before the agitator is installed. To install the bowl, fully lower the bowl support, position the bowl so that the alignment pins on the left side of the bowl support fit in the holes in the bowl. Swing the bowl into the locked position on the bowl support. To install an agitator, the bowl must be on the bowl support and fully lowered. Open the wire cage. Place the agitator inside the bowl and line up the horizontal slot on the agitator with the agitator shaft pins. Slide the agitator up the agitator shaft until it stops and latches. To remove the agitator, first open the wire cage. Lower the bowl by pressing and holding the down arrow on the bowl switch. Hold the agitator and pull the plunger out. Slide the agitator down and off the agitator shaft. Caution before lowering the bowl onto a bowl truck. Always unlock the bowl and swing the bowl out slightly. To raise the bowl, the bowl must be in the locked position. Push and hold the up arrow on the bowl switch. To lower the bowl, push and hold the down arrow on the bowl switch. To raise the bowl while the agitator is mixing the product, when required by the recipe or when using the bowl scraper attachment, close the wire cage, then select the mixing speed on the speed dial. Select the countdown time or hold for continuous count up mixing. While pressing and holding the up arrow on the bowl switch, press and hold the start button. The mixer runs only in the stir speed while the bowl is rising. When the bowl reaches the mixed position, release the start button. The mixer automatically changes to the selected mixing speed. To prepare for mixing, first place the bowl on the bowl support. Pour the ingredients into the bowl. Swing the bowl back to the locked position. Then place the agitator inside the bowl and attach it to the agitator shaft. Return the wire cage to the front center position. Push and hold the up arrow on the bowl switch until the bowl reaches the mixed position and stops. The mixer is now ready for mixing. This is a good spot to turn our attention to timer operation. When using the count up mode, also known as continuous mixing, first turn the speed dial to select the mix speed. Remember, the mixing speed can be changed at any time during the mixing operation. Note, stir is to be used for incorporating ingredients. Do not use to develop dough products. Now set the timer on hold by turning the time dial counterclockwise until hold appears in the time window. Press the start button to begin mixing. The timer starts counting forward. Note, if the wire cage is opened at any time, the mixing operation will stop. To resume the mixing operation, close the wire cage and press the start button. Use the stop button to stop the mixer. The mixing time is displayed in the time window. Press the start button to resume mixing if needed. Note, when the timer reaches 50 minutes, it will roll over to one second and continue counting up until the stop button is pressed. If you choose to use the countdown mode, first turn the speed dial to select the mix speed. If the count up mode was used for the previous batch, the desired time needs to be entered. If the countdown mode was used for the previous batch, the previous time will be displayed. If a different time is needed, turn the time selector to the desired time. Press the start button to begin mixing. The timer starts counting down from the set time. To stop the mixer at any time, press the stop button. To resume mixing, press the start button. For example, let's say the mixer is started at speed one for 30 seconds and is stopped after 10 seconds. Pressing the start button will resume the mixing operation. If the mixer is stopped and a new time setting is entered, pressing the start button saves the new time setting on the current speed selection. For example, if the mixer is started at speed one for 30 seconds and is stopped after 10 seconds, a new time is entered by turning the mix time knob. 
The new time will replace the initial 30 seconds for speed 1 after the start button is pressed. If the time is changed while mixing, the mixer will operate until the new time expires. The adjustment to the time will not be stored. If speed is changed while mixing, the time will change to the previous time for the selected speed and countdown. Note, if the wire cage is opened at any time, the mixing will stop. To resume the mixing operation, close the wire cage and press the start button. When the timer reaches zero, the mixer stops. A beeper sounds for three seconds. The countdown timer displays the last entered time. Here are a few notes for you to remember about operation. Stir is to be used for incorporating ingredients. Do not use it to develop dough products. If the mixer is stopped during a mixing operation, the timer also stops. The timer starts again where it left off when the start button is pressed. And the speed window will display the speed dial's current speed selection. Turn the time selector clockwise to take the mixer out of the hold mode. To unload your mixer, first unlock the bowl and swing it out slightly. Press and hold the down arrow on the bowl switch to lower the bowl. Open the wire cage assembly. Remove the agitator from the agitator shaft. Remove the bowl from the bowl support. The wire cage can be rotated out of the way to add ingredients or access the bowl and agitator. Note how the grooves on the nylon retainer shoes allow the wire cage to ride around the circular ridge of the planetary drip cup. To open the wire cage assembly, rotate it to your left. To close the wire cage assembly, Rotate it to your right until it stops in the front center position. Note, the wire cage assembly must be returned to the front center position for the mixer to operate. Lower the bowl. Remove the accessory and bowl. While holding the wire cage securely with both hands, rotate it to your left until the front center retainer shoe reaches the gap in the circular ridge on the planetary drip cup. Lower the front of the wire cage and move the wire cage assembly slightly to the rear so the rear retainer shoes clear the ridge of the drip cup. The wire cage assembly can now be removed. Wash the wire cage assembly in a sink. Rinse with clear water and dry with a clean cloth. The stainless steel splash guard can be wiped off and or washed with a cloth or sponge using warm soapy water. Rinse with clear water and dry with a clean cloth. To reinstall the wire cage assembly, position the ring of the wire cage assembly so the front center retainer shoe is lined up with the gap in the circular ridge on the planetary drip cup. Position the groove so the rear retainer shoe straddle the circular ridge on the planetary drip cup. Lift the front of the wire cage assembly so the front center retainer shoe passes up through the gap in the circular ridge on the planetary drip cup. Rotate the wire cage assembly to your right until all three retainer shoes straddle the ridge on the drip cup in the three opposed locations. Continue rotating the wire cage assembly so the opening is to the front of the mixer to install the accessory or until it stops at the front center position. Speaking of accessories, a variety of attachments, agitators, and accessories are available. These are described in a separate use and applications handbook, which is furnished on the legacy mixer operator training CD provided with each mixer. Follow the instructions accordingly. Warning, disconnect the electrical power to the machine and follow lockout tagout procedures. New mixer bowls and accessories such as beaters, whips, and dough arms should be thoroughly washed with hot water and a mild soap solution, rinsed with a mild soda or vinegar solution, and thoroughly rinsed with clear water before being used. This cleaning procedure should also be followed for bowls and agitators before whipping egg whites or whole eggs. The mixer should be thoroughly cleaned daily. Don't use a hose to clean the mixer. It should be washed with a clean, damp cloth. The base allows for cleaning under the mixer. The drip cup splash guard assembly, which is secured by three screws, 
should be removed periodically and wiped clean. The apron may be removed for cleaning by loosening the thumb screws. Warning, disconnect the electrical power to the machine and follow lockout tagout procedures. The slideway should be lubricated approximately twice a year. To reach these areas, fully lower the bowl support and remove the apron, which is secured by thumb screws. Wipe a thin coat of Lubriplate 630AA on the bowl pad area of the bowl supports and each slideway. Install the apron. Occasionally, the planetary seal may become dry and begin to squeak. To correct this, work a little lubrication under the lip of the seal. To check the oil level, remove the top cover, which is secured by two screws. Remove the transmission fill plug and check the oil level. If the oil level is below the line on the oil dipstick, add a small amount of the recommended transmission oil until it returns to the proper level. Do not overfill the transmission as leakage may result. Contact your local Hobart service office for the recommended transmission oil. The agitator clearance should be checked with each bowl change. The agitator mustn't touch the bowl and the maximum clearance between the bottom of the bowl and the B-flat beater is 1 8 inch, 3 millimeters. The maximum clearance between the bottom of the bowl and the E or ED dough arm is 5 16ths of an inch, 8 millimeters. Install a bowl and agitator. If the bowl and beater come into contact before the bowl support reaches its stop, adjust the stop screw. Pour enough flour in the bowl to cover the bottom of the bowl where the beater travels. With the bowl fully raised, the beater shouldn't touch the bottom of the bowl. Briefly run the mixer in stir speed. Turn off the mixer, disconnect electrical power supply, and measure the depth of the flour where the beater has traced a path. This measurement should be taken at several points around the bowl to assure accuracy. To adjust the clearance, first remove the apron secured by thumb screws. Adjust the stop screw on the right side. Loosen the bottom locking nut and turn the stop screw counterclockwise to increase the clearance or clockwise to decrease the clearance. Tighten the locking nut while holding the stop screw. After the adjustments are made, replace the apron and secure with the thumb screws. Reconnect the electrical power supply. Carefully operate the bowl lift several times to check the adjustment. If the mixer will not start, the circuit protector may be in the open position. Check the fuse or the disconnect switch. The mixer may be overloaded. The wire cage may not be in the front center position or the bowl isn't in the closed lock position. If the agitator touches the bowl, the bowl may not be in the closed lock position. There may be improper agitator clearance or the agitator may not be installed properly. If the planetary seal squeaks, remember the seal requires occasional lubrication. If the timer displays error code ERXX, if the error code is flashing, wait for mixer to clear error condition. If the mixer continues to stop and the timer displays flashing error code, disconnect the electrical power from the mixer for one minute, then reconnect. If symptoms still exist, contact your local Hobart service office. If the message of BN is shown on the speed display, the bowl is not in all the way. If the message of BN appears again after a corrective action, disconnect the electrical power from the mixer for one minute, then reconnect. If symptoms still exist, contact your local Hobart service office. If the message of B up is shown on the speed display, the bowl is not up all the way. If the message of B up appears again after a corrective action, disconnect the electrical power from the mixer for one minute then reconnect. If symptoms still exist, contact your local Hobart service office. And finally, if the message of BGD is shown on the speed display, the wire cage is not closed completely. If the message of BGD appears again after a corrective action, disconnect the electrical power from the mixer for one minute, 
then reconnect. If symptoms still exist, contact your local Hobart service office. This concludes operator training for the Hobart Legacy Mixer. For more information, consult your manual. Contact your local Hobart authorized service office for any repairs or adjustments needed.